Hi, welcome to this tutorial on fragments. Fragments make it really easy for us to define the data requirements of a container so that it becomes easier to use a container in other contexts. In this case, we're going to use fragments to display the owner of the Pokemon. So let's start by seeding into the right directory. I've already done that. I'm in exercise 4 and run yarn install to get all the dependencies. And let's open up this directory in our editor. In this exercise, to make things a bit easier, a fragment's already been implemented in the Pokemon card component. We can see up here that the field fragments has already been defined, and it's been defined in a Pokemon model, and it specifies the URL and the name attributes. Also in the prop types, when we want a prop of Pokemon, we define the type of this to be of Pokemon card, which is the name of this component, fragments, Pokemon. This ensures that the data that we receive must match the fragment that we've defined. Now if we refer to the Pokemon page, we can see that further down, instead of referencing what's in that fragment, we reference the fragment itself. We can use this triple dot syntax for that. Now if Pokemon cards data dependencies change at any point, we won't have to change anything elsewhere. This will automatically update and pull in the right data. Okay, now that we have a brief idea of how we can define fragments and how to use them, let's go ahead and implement the text that's going to display who owns the Pokemon in the Pokemon card header container. So let's go ahead and import the prop type we need to define the fragment in prop types. Again, I'm going to copy and paste to speed things up. And let's go ahead and paste the fragment in two. And here what we're asking for is the name of the Pokemon and also the name of the trainer, both of which we need in this case. So before we move on, Let's go ahead and copy the prop type. Okay, so we've just defined the fragment for Pokemon card header and we've updated the props. So now let's go back into Pokemon page and include a new component we just edited into the render method. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that in now. And let's go ahead and update the query for this too, because at the moment we're fetching the Pokemon card fragment defined over here, and now we also need to get the Pokemon card header fragment, which we've just defined. So again, I'll copy that code snippet. Right now what we're doing is we're passing the same Pokemon object into our component Pokemon card header and also Pokemon card. This means that these two components have access to a bunch of other information that they don't need to know, which might lead to bugs later on because if they start depending on data that isn't explicitly declared elsewhere and they stop receiving that data, then that's not a good thing. So what we can do is we can use this handy filter function to make sure that they only receive what they've defined in their fragments. So to do that, we'll have to import the filter function. And now instead of passing in Pokemon, we can pass only the data that's been declared in the fragments of those components. This is just a nice thing to do to make sure that there's this guarantee that only the data specified in the fragments will ever be provided, which will hopefully mean less bugs in future. Okay, so we've done all we need to do. Let's see if it runs. And... 
Yes, we have the Pokemon and the name of the trainer, like we specified in the card header component. This.props.pokemon.name is owned by trainer.name, and we see this up here. Let's close that, let's try this, and we can see Pikachu is owned by Julian. So it's all working. That concludes this video, and in the next video, we're going to talk about basic mutations. See you there.